Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free Microsoft 7680 certification training course. I'm James Messer. In this module, we're going to talk about upgrading to Windows 7. Windows 7 upgrades are something that's covered in our requirements that discuss installing, upgrade, upgrading, and migrating to Windows 7. And this includes, but is not limited to, upgrading from Windows Vista and upgrading from one edition of Windows 7 to another edition of Windows 7. This is something we often find ourselves doing is upgrading our system. We've started with a certain operating system, and we would simply like to have the latest and greatest operating system, but we don't want to have to go back and rebuild the entire computer from scratch. We've installed applications. We have documents on the computer. We'd like to maintain consistency, have the customizations that we've made to our backgrounds and to our bookmarks in our browsers and everything else that we've done. We also want to be sure that this is done across all accounts on the computer. It may not just be one person logging in, maybe multiple people logging in. So simply by upgrading, we can keep those things in place. This can save you, obviously, a lot of time. If you don't have to go back and install every application again, you don't have to go back and do a backup of all of the user's data and restore all of the user's data, and you'd simply like to put a disk in, upgrade your system, and get back up and running as quickly as possible, upgrading your system may be a really, really easy way to do this. It's almost always going to be very, very seamless to make this happen, and relatively quick. You don't have to do a lot of backup and restores to make this happen. It's a one-time upgrade, and you're done when everything goes well. Of course, you'll want to consider making your backups and having those backups available just as when you do everything, just in case there happens to be a problem during the upgrade process. But for the vast majority of people doing their upgrades, this is a very, very quick process. There are a few ways to perform an upgrade to Windows 7. The first way to upgrade is simply from the installation media. You slide your installation media into a DVD-ROM, or you start it from whatever resource you might have, and you start the installation. It will recognize that you're running Windows Vista, and it will prompt you for upgrading. Very, very easy to do, and that's probably how you'll do it most of the time if you're doing it on individual computers. If you're already running Windows 7, and you may be running Windows 7 Professional, and you'd like to upgrade to Windows 7 Ultimate, there's an option inside of Windows called the Windows Anytime Upgrade. It's in your control panel. There's a little icon there for the Windows Anytime Upgrade. So you could take an existing version of Windows 7 and upgrade to a more powerful version. You don't need installation media. You can buy it online, click a button, download it, and have that now new version available for what you need. You get everything that you need in that Windows Anytime Upgrade. One thing to keep in mind is that if you're running a 32-bit version of Windows and you need to get to a 64-bit version of Windows, there's no upgrade path to that. You do have to do a reinstallation if you're going to do something like that. If you wanted to downgrade from 64-bit to 32-bit, there's also no path for that. You have to back up user data and do a migration. In the next couple of videos, we'll show you how to do some migration. So even if you're in that situation, you'll still learn exactly the process you should go through to make sure you don't lose any user data when you move from one to the other. I've created this upgrade path chart to give you an idea of where you can go and how you can get there. Along the left side are all of the different Windows Vista versions. Along the top are the Windows 7 versions that we've discussed. And it's the things that you may expect. When you have a version of Vista, we can pretty much go to a comparable or higher version of Windows 7. The only instance that you'll notice where you can't do this is if you're running Windows Vista Home Basic or Windows Vista Home Premium, you cannot upgrade to Windows 7 Professional. You must first upgrade to Home Basic or Home Premium. And then once you have those installed, you could do an in-place upgrade to Windows 7 Professional. That's something you can't jump all the way from Vista to 7. Notice you can go from Vista Home Basic and Home Premium to Windows 7 Ultimate. You can kind of skip over the professional part. If you are already running Windows Vista Business, notice that you can upgrade to Windows 7 Professional. In fact, that's the only version of Windows Vista that you can do an actual upgrade to Windows 7 Professional. And you'll notice Windows Vista 
Vista Ultimate can go to the Windows 7 Ultimate. Windows 7 Enterprise, of course, is if you have a site licensing, a special licensing from Microsoft, you can upgrade to Windows 7 Enterprise if you're running Windows Vista Business or Windows Vista Enterprise. And I put a source here if you want to look at all of those on the Microsoft website. You can simply go to that TechNet page, and it details all of this for you as well. If you are already running Windows 7, either Windows 7 Starter, Home Basic, Home Premium, or Professional, you can do an anytime upgrade. Simply click a button and upgrade your computer all the way to these versions. Notice we can go these anytime upgrades all the way up to the Windows 7 Ultimate. Notice that Windows 7 Enterprise is not available for an anytime upgrade. That's a special license. It's not something you can enable inside of your Windows 7. It's not something that is even available through retail. Obviously, Windows 7 Enterprise is a special license. You may only get that software from Microsoft. Before you install Windows 7, you upgrade to Windows 7, it would be nice to know if the hardware and the software that we were running on our computer could actually work properly with Windows 7. So before you install, you may want to run the Windows 7 Upgrade Advisor. This is included on the Windows 7 installation media. You can also download this from the Microsoft website to find out if your system can even do this. That may be important. You may need to upgrade memory, or you may need to make sure that the applications you have have newer versions that will work properly in Windows 7. If you're in a very large environment, you may not have the capability to go to every single machine to run this. And Microsoft has already thought of this. They've created a tool called the Microsoft Assessment and Planning Toolkit. It's abbreviated MAP. This is a centralized console that will automatically retrieve information from different machines and bring all of that back and show you what's going on. I'll show you a little bit about that. Before you do any installation, even before running these upgrade advisors, you may want to be sure that you have all of the latest service packs installed, all of the latest security updates installed. Make sure that your operating system is absolutely up to date. That will be pretty important. You'll need at least 10 gigabytes of disk space if you're planning to do one of these upgrades. That's a little bit less than if you're doing a clean install or a dual boot installation because there's already an operating system there. We're replacing aspects of what's needed on that system, so we don't need quite as much disk space. Still, we'll need plenty of room there, that 10 gigabyte of free space available. And of course, as I mentioned before, always have a backup. Always get your system completely backed up before you do anything major like this. This is going to be a big change when you go from one operating system to the other. If something goes wrong, you're going to need a way to go back to the way it was before you started the entire process. The Windows 7 Upgrade Advisor is very, very easy to run. You simply launch the advisor, and it tells you to check to see if your Windows is or your PC is ready for Windows 7. You click a button to start the check. It goes through and scans your entire system, looks at your hardware, looks at your software, and it will tell you if you can upgrade. I ran this on my Windows 7 system to see if I could upgrade to a newer version of Windows 7, a more powerful version. In fact, it said that you could upgrade to the 32-bit Windows 7 Ultimate with a Windows Anytime Upgrade. In fact, my machine is from Dell, so it even tells me that you may want to talk to Dell first. There may be different drivers that you're going to need, but all of your system requirements passed. I also was able to see from a software perspective what applications we're not going to work exactly the way that they are under the existing configuration. You may want to be sure that you have an update to some of these before you start working and performing that upgrade, or at least contacting that manufacturer to see if this version is really going to work properly once we perform the upgrade into Windows 7. As I mentioned earlier, if you don't have the ability to go to every single computer and run that upgrade advisor individually, we can do it all from one central console using the Microsoft Assessment and Planning Toolkit. This is really designed for large-scale implementation. You've got a huge environment, hundreds or thousands of computers. You need some automated way to determine if they can really be upgraded or not. This will integrate and, and does require Active Directory, directory services, to be able to get this to work properly. So as you can tell, it really is designed for those enterprise-type environments. What this does is it scans the network to find out what's out there. It uses a lot of different mechanisms, but it's able to work automatically to, to determine exactly what's out there. It tries to find every computer it can in many, many different ways, and then it scans them, it inventories them to determine what's out there, 
what is running on those computers, what software is there, and what hardware is inside of those systems. So it's using built-in functionality to Windows and the rights and permissions available inside Active Directory to be able to access those computers and get detailed information out of them. Obviously, this would not work this way if you did not have rights to those computers. But because this is running and using that Active Directory implementation and you have administrator rights or rights to be able to see what's happening inside of everybody's computer, you can go into different computers, servers, and virtual machines to see what's going on. This is also something that works with many different operating systems, not just Windows operating systems. So if you're running a different operating system, you're running Linux on another machine, you can have this scan that device as well to determine if that Linux machine is capable of running Windows 7. What's interesting about this is that it doesn't require any agent software running on that separate computer. So it simply needs to be running the Windows operating system or whatever operating system it's running. And it's doing polling and querying of that device best it can. If it's running Windows, it can gather a lot more information than it's, if it's running Linux. But the important part is you don't have to do a software installation on every single computer just to run this planning toolkit. Obviously, it would take a lot more time if we had to do a software distribution of another agent just to run that and get that information back. So very clean for the end user, very seamless, something that runs automatically and can tell you a lot about what's happening on those computers. Here's what it looks like. I have a very small network in my network here, and you can see that I've got a lot of systems out there. I scanned five systems. Only one of them was ready for Windows 7. The other four were not part of the Windows domain. So this Microsoft Assessment and Planning Toolkit front end that I was running from my server couldn't access those four. But it did access one of the machines that I have on my domain. And it had scanned it and said, yes, it is ready for Windows 7. And if you wanted to go through and look at the inventory, you can simply select select the different options on the menu here to see what specific machines are on my network, what type of hardware and software is running on there, and what are the recommendations, which ones are available to upgrade or not. If you're in a large environment, you may have a certain budget that you've allocated for upgrades. You may need to know what computers can we keep and what systems are we going to need to replace. And we're going to need to figure out how much money we'll need to be able to migrate everybody to Windows 7. Let's perform an upgrade and see how this works. I've got my Windows Vista desktop here, and I've got it configured with my own background. It's black. I've got a few icons on the desktop, and I've created a document on the desktop called Upgrade Check. And if you look at this, it says this document should still be here after the upgrade. The idea is I'll be upgrading this Windows Vista Ultimate to a Windows 7 Ultimate. And I want to be sure that I show you that everything still stayed in place from the time we started to the time that we finished. I'm going to have the Windows Upgrade DVD in the drive. So I'm just going to do a D colon setup here and start the setup program myself. I could have hit Explore and gone to there as well, of course. Vista says that it needs my permission to continue. and. It has my permission. And now we're going to go through the normal Windows 7 startup. I can check compatibility online or install now. Install now is what I would like to do. This will be very, very similar to the previous installations we've done, where we've done a clean install and a dual boot. Just that this time, we're going to get a couple of additional prompts because we are running in a full-blown operating system. And so the setup program has a few extra things that it can do. One of these things that it can do is to get updates. It can now go out online and get the latest updates for the installation. There's another option here where we could say, don't get the latest updates for the installation. It warns you the installation might fail, and your computer could be more vulnerable to security threats. The advantage here is that we have all of the latest and greatest drivers and information that we can use to do this installation and this upgrade. And unless you have just a very, very poor connection to the internet or you have severe bandwidth limitations, you should almost always choose to get the latest updates. It doesn't take long to get the updates. And then we get right back on track with some of the things that we've seen before, like the end user license agreement. We can accept those license terms. And now we have those options we always have, which is to upgrade or to do an installation of Windows Fresh. And of course, this time, I want to choose to do an upgrade. During this next section, Windows is going to do a compatibility check for me. So I'll be able to tell pretty quickly if this is going to work. And it tells me that Windows Vista Ultimate Extras have been discontinued 
and will no longer be available after upgrading to Windows 7, so something you should keep in mind. And upgrading Windows will affect the following devices and or programs. And it's talking about a very specific sound controller that I have in this virtual machine. In my case, those are just fine. I can continue along with that. We don't have anything that would stop us from doing the upgrade at this point. Now we go through the same file copy process that we've done with the other installations. After a couple of reboots, Windows 7 has now finished doing all of the loading of files, and it now begins the process of transferring the existing files and programs over to work with Windows 7. If you've been doing this upgrade yourself, you know that you go through a number of reboots. There have been four total reboots. We're now finally at the point where we're setting up Windows. And at this point, we've already gone through the process of copying the new Windows files, going through the process of doing the migration of what was on the, the Vista system over into the Windows operating system. And now we can do things like choose some of the options that we had available to us before. Normally, we can simply step through the recommended settings for these. For instance, we'll choose the type of network we're on. And now finally, Windows 7 finishes. At this point, we need to make a decision about whether we would like to continue with this configuration or not. If there's something about this installation that did not go well, before we log in is the point where we need to make a decision. I think this went pretty well, so I'm going to type in my password. And now we're fully engaged at the Windows 7. There's no going back to the Vista desktop after this unless we completely wipe what's on the machine and restore from the backup files. Now that the migration is complete, we can see that we are in Windows 7. It's a different desktop environment. We can see the changes in the UI. But the things that were on the desktop remain there, things like our remote desktop and our Windows compatibility and our upgrade checklist. And indeed, this document should still be here after the upgrade. Our migration went absolutely as we expected. And now we're running in the Windows 7 operating system. Whenever you're installing a brand new operating system, there's certainly a chance that something could go wrong. But fortunately, the process itself is watching to see if there are any issues. There are steps along the way. And if anything goes wrong, the entire installation upgrade process will say that, nope, we don't want to continue. In fact, we want to roll everything back to the way it once was. So it will revert everything back to the previous version, back to Windows Vista, for instance. And when we reboot, it's exactly the way we left it. So we won't be left in the middle with a configuration. If we're going through the upgrade. You're not going to leave your system in a mode that it's not going to be usable. The upgrade process is smart enough to roll back to the last good configuration. One other thing to remember is that if you are finished with the upgrade and you're looking at it and just something isn't quite right or you're just not comfortable with the actual upgrade process, don't log in because you still have a way to roll back to the previous configuration prior to successfully logging in. So simply don't log into Windows 7 until you're absolutely sure that your system is running exactly the way you'd like. That way, if you have any questions whatsoever, you can always go back to the previous version. But of course, you made a backup, right? So at least you know you can go back to the backup. But just another step along the way. And once you install and get the upgrade there and then log in, that's done. You're going to have to use your backup then to go back to the previous configuration. Let's review some of the things that we've learned in this module. Our first question is, what is the process to upgrade from Windows Vista Home Premium to Windows 7 Professional? Well, if you think back to that chart I created, you'll know there is not a direct path. So if you still would like to do the upgrade, you're going to first need to upgrade to Windows 7 Home Premium and then perform an anytime upgrade to finally get to the Windows 7 Professional. Our next question is, how much free disk space is required to upgrade to Windows 7? If you think back to our requirements page, we needed at least 10 gigabytes of free disk space to be able to perform the Windows 7 upgrade. And our last question is, which Windows 7 editions allow upgrades from the 32-bit version to the 64-bit version? And if you also recall, it's a bit of a trick question, none of them. You cannot perform an upgrade 
from a 32-bit to a 64-bit version. You also can't upgrade or downgrade from a 64-bit to a 32-bit version. You must do a migration to be able to do that. And that's why we have those migration videos coming up that's going to show you the exact process to go through if you need to go from a 32-bit to a 64-bit version. That covers our requirements for upgrading to Windows 7. We've now learned how to upgrade from Windows Vista and how to upgrade from one edition of Windows 7 to another edition of Windows 7. If you'd like to watch any of our absolutely free Microsoft videos you'd like to perform, if you'd like to watch any of our absolutely free Microsoft certification videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards or much more, you can visit our website at professormesser.com.